It's been over 100 years since God has given a major spiritual awakening in America. And people have been praying for that for years. As a matter of fact, uh, I think it really began in sincerity back in the 1960s. But through the years, those prayers have grown more frequent and uh, deeper in intensity. And I think especially 20 years into this new century, uh, those prayers are being cried out by people all over this country. Probably not until we get into eternity will we know all the prayers that God heard or all the ways that God worked to bring about a spiritual awakening. But here's the story of one man, a 95-year-old preacher, who felt like his last assignment from God was to pray for a spiritual awakening, a spiritual awakening that would begin in the mountains of Western North Carolina. Can God really start a spiritual awakening with the prayers of one man? Not only can God, but God has done that, and God may be doing that again uh, in Fred Lunsford. Uh, what would impact this gentle, humble old preacher to the point to where he would believe so much in the power of prayer that he would think that he could pray for spiritual awakening in America. Well, I think that goes back to when he was a young boy, to something that happened in Fred's life that greatly impacted him for years to come in the power of prayer. Uh, listen to Fred as he tells it in his own words. I was just five years old and went into a wooded area and right by the side of the road, on the left side, was a thicket. A little stream flowed right through the middle of it. And I crossed this little stream and going up this old road, and I heard a noise out in that laurel thicket. And that noise disturbed me. It didn't sound like an animal. Uh, it sounded, I didn't know what it was. So I started to run first, but, but then my curiosity got the best of me and I had to find out what it was. So I went crawling through this thicket, just pushing my way through this thicket, looking in the direction of the sound. Finally, I got to where I could see. And there was a man laying face down in the leaves. And I looked and I saw his hat laying over here. He wore a little black derby hat, and over on the other side was a little satchel he carried, and I knew it was Uncle Doc, the preacher, Uncle Doc Barker, with his arms stretched out, and he was groaning, and he said, God, I'd rather die in this thicket than to be a powerless preacher. There was something happened to me. I felt something. There's something in that setting that I had never felt before, tugging at my heart. And, and he was just praying. And you better believe what he asked God for, God will do. Fred never forgot what he saw and experienced that day in that laurel thicket. And as a matter of fact, the prayers of Uncle Doc would influence him for years to come. 
and for seven decades as a Baptist minister, uh, preaching and praying, he would often reflect back to what he saw about Uncle Doc praying, God help me, I'd rather be dead than to be a powerless preacher. And Fred was not a powerless preacher, not in his preaching and not in his ministry. But the great power that God had given him really came through prayer. And he would exercise that in his last assignment uh, to pray for spiritual awakening in America. The intensity of prayer as I know it now for spiritual awakening occurred, actually it will be two years ago sometime in the summer. I have a little prayer garden that I go and pray every day and, and there I was praying and I had an experience with God that's beyond measure. Beautiful sunshiny days and I looked at Buckhorn Gap and and Gap in the Mountain. I'd been there many times. It seemed to me that I saw Jesus standing in that gap. And just then I saw a thundercloud come up behind him, start rolling over the mountain, and then I heard the thunder roll and lightning begin to flash. And, and uh, I began to talk to God in a furious manner. I said, Lord, I, I, I'm old and things are about over with me, and now my wife's been gone for several years now, and she's in heaven and I think it's just time to take me on. I'm ready to go. God said, not yet. Why not yet? He didn't answer me. I kept going back every day for maybe three weeks or a month before one day he answered me. And he said, I, not yet, because I've got some unfinished business that you need to take care of. What is that unfinished business? you are be preaching 70 years now. Celebrate 70 years in the ministry and get everybody you can to begin praying for spiritual awakening. I want to send a renewal. I want to send a new work among you and do that. And so I started. That's when I first got the tremendous burden for spiritual awakening among us. Fred clearly knew his assignment. What he didn't know is how that God would do this. And Fred said that God spoke to his heart and said, don't you worry about how I'm gonna do this. I've given you a clear assignment to pray for spiritual awakening and to lead others to pray for spiritual awakening. And I will draw people to you. And God was about to do something that would even surprise Fred at how he was going to continue this move to give a spiritual awakening in this country. Fred was invited to come to Truett Camp to speak in a prayer conference. Uh, Chris Schofield, who works with their Baptist State Convention, uh, was putting this prayer conference on at, at Truett Camp. And so he had invited Fred to come, and also David Horton was to be the main uh, speaker, the main preacher there that day. Well, Fred got sick again, and uh, he had lost his eyesight temporarily, and he really did not feel well, and he didn't think that he was up to making the trip. And Chris Schofield said, no, Fred, the one thing I'm certain about is you are to be at Truett Camp that day and to speak. Back in September of 2019, both of us were featured speakers in a prayer conference at uh, Truett Baptist Camp there in Murphy. And that day, you told a story from your boyhood days about a man that you affectionately called Uncle Doc. And that story you told gripped my heart and motivated me to pray with greater frequency and greater intensity than I ever have in my life. After the prayer conference was over, I was driving home and I kept thinking about that story about Uncle Doc. God used that in my heart in an amazing kind of way. 
I couldn't keep the story to myself. I, I told everyone that I saw about what happened over the next few weeks. And every time I shared the story, God used it in a special way in the person to whom I'd been speaking. Well, I had felt impressed to the Lord that what I needed to do was to contact Fred Lunsford and to arrange a time when I could spend an afternoon with him. Well, in the process of doing that, I believe the Lord put it upon my heart to invite my son, Michael, who is a pastor and also a professor here at Fruitland, and also to invite Greg Mathis, my pastor, and J.D. Grant, a good personal friend, also professors here at Fruitland Baptist Bible College. When I ask all three to go, without reservation, they all three immediately said yes. That first meeting with Fred would become a day that literally would transform the prayer lives of those of us that traveled there that day forever. I'll never forget when we got there and I began to knock on the door at Fred's house. Uh, he came to the door uh, and he was barefooted. Now, what was so surprising about that is it was so cold when we actually left to travel over there that day. And being in the mountains, it was even colder than that over there. But as he sat down and we sat down and began to talk, uh, he shared with us the reason that he didn't have any shoes on was something that he experienced back from World War II. Uh, Fred was actually one of those soldiers that stormed the beaches at Normandy. Uh, he was one of those that fought in the Battle of the Bulge. And it was so cold that his, his feet were frostbitten. And he suffers, even all these years later, uh, from his feet burning, even in the coldest of weather. And as he told us that story, I couldn't help but look around the walls at all of the recognition, all of the medals, all of the things that were given to him uh, as being a part of that generation that we call the greatest generation that fought in World War II. And I realized that literally we were sitting in the presence of an American hero. And so as we talked to him that day, he shared that, but he quickly moved from all of the patriotism uh, back to the spiritual. And he kept talking about what he had on his mind and what he had on his heart and this assignment that God had given him about praying for a spiritual awakening. And so I asked him, I said, Fred, how far is your prayer garden? And he said, it's about two miles away. And I said, well, can we go up there? Uh, can we possibly go up there and pray with you? And he said, let's go. As we traveled that day to Fred's prayer garden, uh, I was amazed to think that here was a man almost 95 years of age that every day gets up and travels two miles to his prayer garden. Uh, and as we traveled that road that day, we saw an old church where he grew up. Uh, we saw his old home place where he grew up. But where we really wanted to go was to his prayer garden. And so we got up there, and as we got to the prayer garden, Fred showed us uh, sort of what was there and some things that he had done and how special of a place it was to both he and his wife. Uh, and he actually named the prayer garden after her but how he would come there, rain or snow, no matter what the temperature was, every day to pray and talk to the Lord. So as we sat there in that vehicle that day, uh, Fred began to share with us that experience that he had had two years earlier, uh, where as he looked over into the gap of that mountain, that he felt like that Jesus appeared to him. I'll never forget something Fred said. He said, I know a lot of people will doubt that that happened. And some people will say that that was my imagination. But Fred said this, he sure seemed real to me. After Fred shared that story with us, he said, gentlemen, he said, I believe that God has brought y'all over here today to join me for praying for spiritual awakening. And so he said, let's pray. I can tell you that I have never in all of my 65 years felt the manifestation of God, the presence and the power of God 
that I felt that day, the vehicle could barely contain us. I mean, it was an experience that is just almost beyond description. Well, I've been telling people ever since that occurred, that was one of the greatest manifestations of the Holy Spirit that I've experienced in a long time, as we all sat there in that vehicle. And I looked over at you, and you said, you are seeing your prayers answered right before your eyes. All of us, as we left that day and traveled back, uh, tried to process uh, what we had experienced. As a matter of fact, the vehicle was pretty quiet going back as we thought about the manifestation of God that day uh, in that vehicle. I know for me personally, I couldn't sleep that night. Uh, I prayed and asked God to help me understand what was happening. And, and so I called you the next morning. I, I just still had to talk about it. And I called you the next morning. Five times that day. Yeah, I called you five times that next day. I tried. I couldn't get it off my mind. And, uh, but when I called you that morning, you said that you had already been talking to God and that God had spoken to you and that you wanted to do it again, but you wanted to do it back on top of the mountain up there. Uh, and for us to get as many preachers as we could to come on top of that mountain and maybe call it praying on preachers, praying on the mountain for a spiritual awakening. And God impressed upon my mind uh, two preachers. I think it's mostly because we live in close vicinity of one another. But one is uh, Don Wilton, who pastors the First Baptist in Spartanburg, South Carolina. And the other is Ralph Sexton, a well-known preacher over in Asheville, North Carolina. And I called Don that day and I said, Don, I, I don't really uh, know how to explain this, but I just want to tell you what happened. And I, I began to, de to describe the experience. And Don said, that resonates with my soul and I'll help you. And Ralph Sexton said, I think God is in this, and you've got my support. I will use my influence. May the 5th would be the day where a 100 preachers would come and pray on the mountain with Fred Lunsford. By the middle of March, uh, we not only had 100 preachers registered, but we had 200 preachers registered to go on May the 5th over to pray on that mountain for spiritual awakening with Fred Lunsford. In my praying for spiritual awakening, some, we, sometimes we try to program God. Uh, we, we want it done like we think it ought to be done. And I never dreamed that it would happen the way it has. And then something happened in this country and even around the world that none of us expected. The coronavirus set in. At least six people have died in an outbreak of the new coronavirus, which has now reached the United Breaking States. news tonight, the U.S. reaching another grim milestone. Deaths in the after returning from Wuhan, China. None of us could imagine that literally uh, we'd be shut down for weeks. We would not be able to come to church. Nobody ever imagined at Easter there'd be empty pews and empty parking lots. And yet, for whatever reason, God had allowed this to say what he wanted to say and do what he wanted to do. I couldn't help but think about uh, what is inscribed on the Jefferson Memorial. Indeed, I tremble for my country when I reflect that God is just, that his justice cannot sleep forever. Did we really think that God was gonna let us continue in America down the path that we were going? Did we really think that God would not at some point intervene and say, enough is enough. I want you to hear me. I want you to turn back to me. I want you again to get on your knees and cry out to me. Billy Graham said, for a nation to stand, it first has to go back and get on its knees. God certainly had our attention and God had brought this country to a screeching halt it was becoming obvious that we would not be able to travel on May the 5th over to personally pray with Fred Lunsford on the mountain. He said that he now realized it was never about getting 
a hundred or two hundred preachers physically over on the mountain to pray. He said that was simply to get the attention of the preachers. That what God wanted was to get more than two hundred preachers. He wanted to get hundreds and thousands of Christians, wherever they might be on May the 5th, to join him to pray and fast and to ask God to give a spiritual awakening in this country. So we set a goal of trying to get 10,000 people that would sign up and join us to pray on May the 5th. In the first 48 hours, in just a little bit more than 48 hours, we already registered over 10,000. And so we began to pray again with Fred. And Fred said God had given him a new vision. He believed that God wanted to get 100,000 Christians that would join him wherever they might be and fast and pray on May the 5th to ask God if he would open up the windows of heaven and pour out his spirit upon this country. Wouldn't it be something if God would take the humble prayers of this 95-year-old preacher and have hundreds and even thousands of prayers to join him on that day and cry out for spiritual awakening. A.T. Pearson said, there has never been a spiritual awakening in any country or locality that did not begin in united prayer. Can God really start a spiritual awakening with the prayers of one man? Not only can God, but God has done that, and God may be doing that again. Dear Lord, we come to Thee today on top of this mountain, come in here to call upon Your precious name as I cry out to Thee for spiritual awakening for our land. And Lord, I know You've called me to get people to be praying for spiritual awakening. We ask for a revival, and we continue to ask You to refresh us anew. And oh God, that You would pour out Your Spirit upon these United States of America. And so, God, we just plead to you today that you would send the revival that would renew your people. And God, we're asking you for revival. We're believing that you have that in mind for us in this season. And we point to your son, Jesus Christ, and the change that he's made in us that we desire to see in others as well. Now, I pray for spiritual awakening among our families. Praying, dear Lord, for children, grandchildren, Parents, grandparents. Dear Jesus, please help all the doctors and nurses there. A revival in the home, that God, because the revival breaks out in the home, that God, it would lead to the church, and from there, God, it would lead to the lost. You said, if my people, from the very smallest child to the oldest person, here I am crying out to you. Of your nation and our world. You are the author and finisher of our faith. You, God, and you alone renew and reprove, God. Church that has lost its first love, Lord, may ground zero for national revival be in our churches. Send revival and spiritual awakening to each one of us individually. God, we cry out to you today to bring a spiritual awakening across this land. Lord, may our hearts be turn to you. God, I cry out with thousands of people in this United States of America today. Lord, we were in a place of folly. God, we don't want to go back there. That we might turn back to God, for you are our God and our Father. It is in you we trust. Oh, Lord, how desperately we need you. 
God, we need you in this land. There are many people crying out around the world today, oh, thousands of people, perhaps millions. God, would you revive us for this day and for the sake of our children and for the sake of our grandchildren and for the sake of the church in America. I come the best I know how with my heart heavy on the altar for you. In Jesus' name, I do pray, amen. heart that if we will humble ourselves and repent of our sins and seek God, that he'll do that again. Well, God said he would. He said he would. He don't lie. And I believe it with all my heart.